Deserts are often betrayed as desolate, lifeless places. But in reality, some of the world's deserts are teeming with life. They may not have large flowing rivers and vast expanses of greenery, but they are more than capable of sustaining large and deadly animals. Of course, most of the world's deserts are dangerous because of the extreme temperatures and the lack of water. But in today's video, I'll be focusing on deserts that are dangerous because of the wildlife that inhabits them. There are a wide variety of desert animals that could easily take down a fully grown human, but thankfully they usually choose to hunt other prey. In today's video we'll be travelling all over the world, and to start off with we'll be heading over to the Middle East. The Arabian Desert spreads across almost all of the Arabian Peninsula, with an estimated area of over 2.3 million square kilometres. It's the fourth largest desert in the world, and although it may seem empty at first glance, if you look a little closer you'll find a number of hardy desert creatures. In the mornings you'll find small colourful lizards basking on the rocks, but there are also larger, more formidable lizards that can be found here such as the sand monitor. Snakes are usually not a threat if you leave them alone, but if you're not looking where you're going it can be easy to step on one, and this is one way that you can get a deadly dose of venom. Many of the snakes in the Arabian desert are relatively harmless such as the sand boas and rat snakes, but you do need to take care when it comes to the horned vipers and cobras. Bites from these animals can be deadly, but because not many people encounter them in the wild, deaths from snake bites in this desert are relatively rare. Of course, reptiles are common in deserts around the world, but this desert also supports large mammals. Amongst the dunes you can find a few species of gazelle, oryx and other large mammals, and unfortunately for them their life isn't predator free. These herbivores and their young are targeted by medium and large sized mammals, with many of them also being found on the African continent. Striped hyenas will often scavenge animals that succumb to the harsh conditions, and the caracal and Arabian wildcats mostly focus on the rodents and birds that inhabit the area. There are two predators that find themselves at the top of the food chain, and the names of these animals usually strike fear into those who hear them. Leopards and wolves are extremely successful and adaptable predators, but the wolves and leopards in the Arabian desert aren't the same as their counterparts in other parts of the world. The Arabian leopard is the smallest subspecies of leopard in the world and it's currently listed as critically endangered. And it's a similar story with the Arabian wolf as it's also critically endangered and it's one of the smallest of its kind. If these predators were found in larger numbers and if they were more aggressive towards humans then this desert would rank higher on the list. But really these animals have more reasons to fear humans than we do to fear them. Despite this, the Arabian desert still has a few reptiles that could end your life, and the presence of the honey badger may bump it up a few places in some people's minds. Because of the vast array of potentially dangerous animals, the Arabian desert slots in at number 7, and for our next entry we'll be heading northeast. The Gobi Desert is the sixth largest desert in the world, and it can be found in parts of northern China and Mongolia. Unlike some other deserts, it has wide expanses of greenery amongst its sand dunes, and it's a relatively cold desert with massive fluctuations in temperature throughout the year. In the winter, it can drop to as low as minus 40 degrees Celsius, and in the warmer summer months, it can reach temperatures of 45 degrees Celsius. This means that you have to be an extremely hardy creature to scrape out a living here, and there are a surprisingly large number of animals that have chosen to live in this desert. Both species of Bactrian camel thrive in this arid habitat, and their coats change dramatically with the seasons. There are a few gazelle and antelope species that can be found in some of the greener parts, such as the prehistoric looking saiga antelope. The Mongolian people have a rich history, and at one point in time their horseback warriors were feared across the continent. Horses still play a massive role in the ecosystem of the country today, and there are a few wild horse and donkey species that can be found in the Gobi Desert. This area has fewer venomous snakes than the Arabian Desert due to its harsher winters, but there are a few vipers to try and avoid. If I were to tell you that a big cat and a brown bear inhabit the Gobi then you might believe that it belongs higher up on the list, but the large predators in this region are slightly different. The Gobi bear is one of the smallest brown bear subspecies, and it spends most of its days feeding on roots and berries. They will sometimes supplement this diet with rodents and insects, but meaty meals such as this are treats for the Gobi bear. 
If you cornered this bear and decided to attack it, then there's a chance that it would be deadly. But there has never been a recorded goby bear attack as they are relatively peaceful and solitary animals, and they often flee when they spot humans. Unfortunately, these bears are also incredibly rare, and it's a real shame as they are so distinctive. In some of the mountainous regions of the Gobi, you can find a very elusive cat, and it preys on many of the wild goats that are perfectly adapted to its rocky slopes. The snow leopard isn't the first animal that you'd expect to see in a desert, but they are occasionally spotted in the region. Famously, these cats aren't interested in humans at all, and even though they are fully capable of taking us down, there has never been a recorded snow leopard attack on a human. They can be brutal, silent killers, but they mostly reserve this side of themselves for hooved mammals that they share the mountain with. So even though big cats and bears are usually deadly to humans, these ones aren't. And for this reason, the Gobi Desert only slots in at number 6. Antarctica isn't what most people think of as a desert, but technically it's a polar desert with almost no rainfall throughout the year. There is a difference between polar deserts and true deserts, but as this video is just a bit of fun and because I didn't put true deserts in the title, I've decided to include it in this video. Because Antarctica is a continent as well as a polar desert, it's enormous, and this means that it's home to a wide variety of wildlife. Because it's a very harsh and unforgiving part of the world, not all types of animals can survive here, with the most dominant groups of animals being birds, mammals, and fish. If you're able to survive the freezing temperatures, then you'll also have to look out for animals, but thankfully most of the dangerous animals are found in the water. On land, you're likely to find friendship and amusement with many of the penguin species. And even though the different seal species can be boisterous, you'll be able to easily outrun them on land. The male elephant seals can be very aggressive in the mating season, but they are far more interested in their own kind at this time of year. If you enter the water, there's another seal that's far more deadly, and it has claimed the life of a human in the past. The leopard seal is arguably the most distinctive seal in the world, as it has an almost reptilian looking head, and it targets prey that most other seals don't. Many people find their appearance unnerving, and in the few cases that they have been able to interact with humans, they have proven to be completely fascinated with us. They will often give divers penguins that they have killed, and in one tragic case, a leopard seal drowned a researcher. It's unknown if this killing was deliberate, but it just shows how dangerous these animals can be. The leopard seal shares its frigid waters with the most formidable predator in our oceans, but once again they are rarely a threat to humans. Orcas have killed people in captivity, but there's never been a confirmed orca attack in the wild. Some argue that there could be a fatal attack one day in the future, and it's possible that the orcas around Antarctica could be involved. Unlike some other orcas in other parts of the world that mostly feed on fish, the majority of orcas in Antarctica feed on marine mammals. This means that it's possible that they'd be more likely to attack people than other orcas, but thankfully so far this hasn't happened. So even though Antarctica isn't your typical desert, it's still very dangerous, and it's fit for number 5 on this list. The Simpson Desert is the fourth largest Australian desert, with an area of around 176,000 square kilometres. Its landscapes are dominated by red sands and native plants, and many of the animals in this desert can't be found anywhere else in the world. Just like with many of the other Australian ecosystems, you can find a variety of colourful birds, many of which congregate around the few watering holes in the area. Emus aren't particularly dangerous, but they have won a few wars against humans in the past, and the wedge-tailed eagle is a threat to any small to medium-sized desert inhabitants. Reptiles are a common sight across all of Australia, and the Simpson Desert is no exception. The sand goanna and the parenti are some of the most formidable predators in the area, with the latter being the largest lizard in Australia. These lizards always flee when encountered, so the real danger in this desert comes from its snakes. There are a few species with relatively mild venom, but the three species you need to look out for are the western desert taipan, the brown snake, and the inland taipan. The two taipan species are among the most venomous land snakes in the world, and many would have you believe that they are the deadliest snakes to humans. If you're bitten by one of these snakes then you'll be in serious trouble, but as they're mostly found in remote areas and because they're relatively docile, there has never been a recorded death caused by either of these snakes. 
It's a different story with the brown snake as it's more common and it isn't limited to arid areas. And it's believed to be responsible for 7 out of the last 10 snake bite fatalities in Australia. If you're in a desert, then you haven't got easy access to antivenom, so a bite from any of these snakes would certainly be fatal. If the reptiles weren't a big enough problem, then you'll also have to watch your back as dingoes are about. And even though there have only been a handful of attacks in the past decade, they have taken the lives of humans in the past. Because of all of these potential dangers, the Simpson Desert slots in at number 4. And up next is another unconventional desert. The Patagonian Desert is the largest desert in South America, and it's the 8th largest in the world. The Patagonian Desert is classed as a desert because of its low levels of precipitation, and this is mostly because of the Andes Mountains. The desert is in the rain shadow of this mountain range, which means that the mountains block almost all of the moisture from getting to the desert. Most of this desert ecosystem is very harsh and arid, but there are some lush areas where larger animals congregate and sometimes hunt. Here you can find some of the iconic South American animals such as rheas, maras and armadillos. But this area is famous for two species in particular. The guanaco is one of the four species in the llama genus, and it's perfectly adapted to the Patagonian wilderness. They are able to adapt to a wide range of landscapes and conditions, and they are a common sight in the Patagonian desert. Where you find guanacos, you're more than likely to find one of America's deadliest predators, and they'll target pretty much all of the animals that they come across in this dry habitat. The cougar is one of the most adaptable cats in the world, and that's why it can be found across such a large area of both North and South America. In the Patagonian desert, it preys on the plentiful guanacos, and its presence in the area is one of the main reasons why this desert is on the list. Even though fatal cougar attacks are extremely rare, they do happen, and a fully grown cougar is more than a match for your average human. The cougars in South America are less likely to attack humans than the cougars in North America, but the sheer number of cats in this area means that the Patagonian Desert slots in at number 3. The Sonoran Desert is a relatively large desert in North America, and it spreads across Arizona, California and Mexico. This desert is renowned for its many cactus species, and they dominate many of the landscapes in the area. Just like the Patagonian Desert, the Sonoran Desert is also inhabited by cougars, and black bears can be found in some of its riparian habitats. These large predators would put this desert near the top of the list on its own, but the Sonoran Desert also has plenty of dangerous reptiles too. The main danger comes in the form of snakes, but thankfully some of these reptiles are polite enough to warn you before they bite. There are several rattlesnake species that live amongst the cactuses, and so does the Sonoran coral snake. The latter is mostly nocturnal and spends a lot of its time underground, but the rattlesnake species are much easier to find. As I mentioned earlier on in the video, if you're in a desert then you're likely to be far away from a hospital, and this of course negatively affects your chance of survival. Rattlesnakes are responsible for the most snakebite deaths in the US, with them being involved in 8 out of the last 10 snakebite fatalities in the country. If this wasn't enough danger, then there are also dangerous invertebrates to look out for, such as black widows and bark scorpions. And there's one lizard that's garnered quite the reputation. The Gila monster is just one of the many venomous lizards, but thankfully its venom isn't a threat to life in the vast majority of cases. Instead, their bite is known for causing extreme pain, and when they bite, they usually hang on for a long while, meaning that you can get a healthy dose of venom. One of the only fatalities from a Gila monster bite occurred in February of last year, but this lizard was a captive specimen. The combined danger of all of the animals in this desert means that it's fit for number 2 on this list, and for our final desert, we'll be heading over to Africa. The Sahara is the largest hot desert in the world, with only the cold deserts of Antarctica and the Arctic being larger. It covers almost all of North Africa, and it has an estimated area of around 9.2 million square kilometres. Even though most of its landscapes are arid and lifeless, there are still plenty of animals that manage to find enough water and food to survive here. The large herbivores mostly come in the form of antelopes and camels, but giant desert elephants are also able to live here, but it's getting harder for them in the modern day due to the effects of climate change. There's a few animals that you wouldn't expect to find in an area that's defined by its lack of water, and one of these animals would certainly be a crocodile. 
Despite this, there is a crocodile that can be found on the edges of the Sahara, and it goes by the name of the West African crocodile. This species is often confused for the Nile crocodile and they are sometimes spotted together, but thankfully they are far less aggressive, and they are usually a lot smaller with a maximum size of around 4 meters. These crocs have been responsible for fatal attacks on humans in the past, and the same can be said for a few other predators in the Sahara. African lions can be found roaming its fringes, and a northwest African cheetah takes advantage of the plentiful antelope numbers further in. If these large mammals weren't enough, then there are also many deadly snakes in the form of saw-scaled vipers and cobras. And if you're really unlucky, then you'll run into one of the deadliest scorpions in the world in the form of the Deathstalker, which can also be found in parts of the Arabian Desert. All of these combined threats means that the Sahara Desert is the deadliest desert in the world, but it's still a great location to spot African wildlife. There are a few other so-called deserts such as the Kalahari that would have easily made it onto the list, but technically they aren't true deserts so they didn't feature. Despite this, there are still a few other deserts that could have easily made it onto the list, so if you think you know of any then let me know down in the comments below. But for now, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.